everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bishop's RV here with some updated footage on the 310 BHI. Uh, Harry Glenn, Hemisphere, whatever you want to call it right here, two, two names for the same RV. Um, there have been some significant updates since about two years ago when I first had a chance to put the camera on this one. I want to go through and cover today. And let's just start rolling from the top down because I think one of the most important and impactful updates they made on this one is that they have now uh, put a fiberglass roof cap on the top of these, basically like a motorhome fiberglass roof on a towable RV. And they're certainly not the, necessarily the very first ones to do it. But in terms of a mainstream volume builder like this, I'm not really aware of anyone that's done it before or does it now. I think that's a really cool thing. And and mark my words, I think you're going to see a lot of other manufacturers start kind of, uh, you know, copying that form right there because it just it, it provides so much better protection up top and and reduced upkeep, not zero, but reduced. In the meantime, though, they also peeled all the carpet out of this thing and they they changed the kitchen slide so it's no longer a toast cover and they changed the way the pantry door opens so you can actually fully get into that pantry door far, far more easily than you ever could before. What I like about this floor plan, I've seen things like this before, like a Cougar 34 TSB is similar, an Eagle 312 is similar, but they flip flop uh, the living room so that the entertainment and the dining are on opposite sides. And I like it. I like the way this is laid out a little bit better myself. It just looks and feels more open, more fun, a little somehow, a little more fancy dancy. I'm not exactly sure why. And I also don't know why I said it that way, but there you have it. Um, the, the rear room on this one though, it's either like a second living room or a bunk room, but what's cool is it's not just like a bunk on the floor. It's what they call their Versa Queen system, where during the day it basically is a big old thick comfy uh, memory foam couch. But when you need it, it pops open into a camp queen in that rear room. Not to mention you now have a true queen in the bedroom and it's washer dryer prepped and so many other good things. About the only downside to this one is just that she's big, she's real big. And you know, all these different RVs, they all have great benefits and drawbacks and all kinds of things. Um, this one, I feel like they really took some time to, to listen to some feedback and really improve this. Because what they made before, it was okay. It was not this good. Uh, like, for instance, since the last time I recorded this, I think they've standardized the 15,000 BTU air conditioner. And uh, these are, this, the Heritage Glen full proper series, not Hyperlite, but full Heritage Glen. They are 50 amp standard, so they're uh, available from the factory with second air prep by default, or as we're going to see today, the optional second air conditioner. Now, when you move into their fifth wheels, the second air conditioner becomes centralized. I would really like it if that happened on these travel trailers, and it turns out they're actually a step ahead of me. They are working on uh, getting that updated at some point. Now, when we turn around, it'll be a little more obvious. The the entry area here with the, the sofa and the entertainment, it can feel a little tight perhaps um especially like if you have the recliners kicked out it does block the hallway off a little bit but like i don't know i feel like i can deal with it getting rid of the toe stubber uh step up slide is nice they actually have not accomplished that on all of their floor plans but the fact that they've done it here i think is very reassuring that it is something they're aware of and they're working on and uh you might have noticed how that's that marine woven slide flooring you'll see the same thing over here in the main slide that is um transitional that is uh in time changing out i don't have a hard deadline but they're going to switch that woven flooring in the slide uh, to match the main floor. And I think that that'll just really clean the look up another step. Something that has helped that are what I call the square flow windows, where um, instead of, you know, a radius corner on the uh, the windows, they're, they're a little more rectangular, 90 degree edged off. And um, it's uh, similar, obviously, let's, let's just call a spade a spade a duck a duck. It's, it's very similar and likely heavily inspired by what Brinkley is doing. But it gets rid of all the boxy valances and lambrequins, and your shades are actually integrated right into the windows. But a cool thing they're doing is it still has a bug screen. Some of the guys and gals and Hot Pockets using those kind of setups, they do not have uh, the uh, the extra bug screens there. I also like the the indirect LED lighting they have above the slides in the main cabin and below the uh, the kitchen island. It just, uh, like if you, if, if you turn them off, I, is it this switch? Yes, there you go. It doesn't look bad. Suddenly though, it just looks 
cooler, lighter, brighter. Not massively. Not not like, oh man, without it, I would never camp in this. But it, I don't know. I think it looks nice. I really like the kitchen outlet placement too. Like you've got a, a set of outlets right on the front of the island. I almost feel like it should be offset a little bit over to the countertop side, but it's, it's fine. I like the outlets over here in that big chunk of counter space. But then over here, we have this little corner pocket um, coffee bar, effectively. And that... I think is a really, really handy chunk of space right there. A um, couple things. You've got some household outlets. You've also got prep for like a little Wi-Fi LTE extender booster thing. Has anyone actually installed one of those, used it? Do you have any feedback? Would you do it again? Because like, you know, a lot of manufacturers have started including those things, but I sure don't hear a lot of people caring about it or asking about it. If I had to guess, it's nothing that's actually costing you money, the prep. Most manufacturers, uh, uh, like parts suppliers, like, uh, you know those telescopic ladder mounts that you see in a lot of RVs? You know why tons of manufacturers have gone to those? Because they get the mount basically for free so that um, a, a customer like you may be, in a sense, encouraged and or incentivized to uh to go buy the corresponding ladder that matches that bracket at an inflated price tag kind of like some of those bluetooth uh speaker mounts that i've talked about in the past so that's just kind of one of those things that happens in the rv industry now i do not use fisheye wide angle lenses this is a uh, open feeling barreled ceiling right here and they even still include the skylight just to really let all the light shine in like the age of aquarius over here now that tv is not small um you know it's it's it's, it's like honeycomb big <laughs> yeah 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 anyway down below that we got our electric space heat and tootsie toaster and soundbar a couple more little power outlets over there that could be a neat little charging station um, and then over here, I, I, I'm, I, I can't remember if there's a hide-a-bed swaption. We're looking at a theater seat. Um, give our give our team a call. If like you're really like if you love this floor plan, but you want it with a hide-a-bed, instead call our team and let's see if we can make that happen for you. In the meantime, I'm gonna flip the lid on this sucker right here, the same way my wife flips her lid when I tell her I took out the trash and I actually didn't, and then because I meant to, and then she comes home. But anyway, enough about my life. Some USB plugs inside that armrest right there, and a massive walk-in pantry tame it center right there there's some huge huge storage space in that thing and overall that's one of the things i like about this design it, it's kind of funny the 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 living room section of this the sofa and the entertainment it's really squished up in the front of the main living cabin but it's effective you know they give you a theater seat straight across from a big old tv and the tv can pivot around and that's all cool but this RV is really focused on like kitchen, family, get together, have a meal kind of space. It's not the kind of camper where on a rainy day, everyone's going to sit in the living room. Because, you know, for, for primary comfy sofa seating in the living room, you really only have the theater seat. I think on a rainy day, the owners of the RV who, who sleep in the front bedroom are probably going to take over the theater seat. And I think that the, the kids are either going to be in that back room or over in the dinette kind of chilling and, and fiddling around or whatever. That's how I estimate this to be used. I could be totally off base. I could be wrong, but that kind of makes sense to me. And this is also very functional and friendly for our four-legged furry friends. They're very good about not putting floor vents in uh, Harry Glens whenever they have the opportunity uh, to avoid them. Uh, that was a weird way to phrase that, but technically accurate. <laughs> I love that big window back here. That is awesome. Just, the, again, the light, the airflow, and you got the same thing up here. And again, opens for airflow, and anything that opens for airflow does have a screen. And then there's just the little details, like the little grab handle to get you up. Like, it's not a ladder, but the thing is, these shelves are actually reinforced so the kids can clamber themselves right up them. And clamber is a fun little word I don't get to use all that often. Uh, if you feel like offering entertainment uh, in the bunk room, this is where that would be located. What I'm looking for... Okay, good. I was looking for, like, TV hookups because I'm like, this is obviously, like, a TV-sized space, but I sure couldn't find any plugs anywhere. Good news, they do have them. Also, I like how... That pocket over there could either be like, you know, additional dresser, linen storage, or clothes, or whatever. But you've also got some outlets in there. That could be handy. And again, no floor ducted heating back here, which I think a lot of people with uh, the littles are going to appreciate. Now, if you got a little, little, and they're going to sleep on an upper bunk, I would definitely recommend get one of those don't fall out of the bed kind of um, safety gate sort of jobs. But this over here, 
There's a couple different ways that we can look at this, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways of looking at it. I've got it kind of in what I call daytime second living extended living sofa mode, because that's the thing with the, the bunk room door open, this becomes a second living room. You've got a sofa across from an entertainment center, and from the, the living room sofa, you can eyeball straight back into here to keep an eye on uh, what's going on, because you've got the move bunk, get out the way, above the Versa Queen down here, which the, the bottom sofa flips open into a Camp Queen size bed, or you can totally get it out of there. Nothing says you have to keep it in this whatsoever. If you don't want it there at all, if th this model is prime uh, real estate, if what you're looking for is uh, to like a build your own office and you really don't have to build much because you've already got power outlets all over the place, you don't have to remove any furniture. You flip the bunk out of the way. You move that mattress and you're done, son. Like it, it gets the job done and it gets it done very, very well. What I don't know is what's behind that panel over here. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll have to see if I can try to find out if I don't forget. I have a feeling I'll probably forget. Anyway, um, ugh, let me give a fat butt up. Ugh, okay. I gotta, I gotta lose some weight. Good Lord. Uh, the door. It does swing. I kind of feel like a sliding door. I would like a little bit better, but I, I don't know if I don't know if there's physically enough room on that wall to pull off a sliding door. So hey, we got you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. That's what I used to tell my daughter at Christmas time. And I tell you, I've always been very appreciative. Like she'll open socks and um, ugly clothes. <laughs> provided by aunts, uncles, and grandparents so, uh, sometimes. Most of the time the things are cute, but sometimes she'll get some ugly clothes and she always, always um, uh, thanks them with kindness. Sorry, I got my vest in the way here. Let me, um, here, there, throw that on the couch. It got a little warm inside. All that. One thing with all these windows, with the sun coming in, it's definitely having a greenhouse effect in here. It is warm for sure. Uh, up here in the bathroom, yeah, this has really become a dominant bathroom arrangement in the RV industry. They all, everyone does it a little differently. They give us an enclosed, shallow, but enclosed linen cabinet, medicine cabinet, and then a little bit of space under the sink right there, which overall I think is great. This is one of the models where they're still putting the toilet paper roller about four feet away from the toilet. And I don't know... Uh, what go go gadget arms they have down here at Harry Glenn, but man, there's no way I can reach it. This is also very interesting. I, I appreciate the fact that they angled the toilet to give me, um, you know, shoulder and hip room, but they angled it so severely. My long left leg basically had to hang out in this rectangular shower. It was the only way that I could really somewhat comfortably use the toilet. What is also nice, though, that open feeling barreled ceiling offers some nice headroom in that shower. And I'm kind of curious. It's a newer thing that they've just started doing. What do you think about the way they've trimmed out all these lights right here? I don't know. I think it just looks a little cleaner, a little more intentional. Now, in case you're curious, as, as if you couldn't see it with your own two eyes, they give us this nice big sticker right here that says Versatilt Bed. Um, the, uh, it, it, when this, when I first recorded this model, I think it was a camp queen bed. I think it was a 60 by 74 short queen. And what I would have told you is, yeah, but look at the foot of the bed. There's all this room in here. You could put a true queen in it. And then I immediately asked the question, probably same as you, why don't they just put a true queen in it? And finally, in the 2024 camping season, they did. We now finally have a true queen bed in this. Uh, again, optional second air conditioner at the time of this recording it is non-ducted bedroom AC only. They, again, they have told me that they are working on looking at the idea of centrally ducting that bedroom air conditioner, but I have zero time frame. And when that happened, it might, it might happen in a year. It might not happen at all. I don't know. I just kind of want to let you know what might be happening out there in case that's important or critical to you. That might be a thing. Like if you watch this video two or three years from now, it may have changed. I don't know. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, they've done some good things in this bedroom some things that are easily easily missed um uh, again though real quick just to kind of lay this all down because it is that versatile bed to put it in the down sleeper position give you a look at her there this also has that new big front windshield but if you, you don't want all the the light pouring in it does have a blackout privacy shade, which is really nice if that front windshield's facing the sun so it doesn't end up scorching your scalp, you know? Under the bed, there's good storage, but over the bed, 
you have that just giant overhead cabinet, but it is actually strutted so that it holds its, itself up. It's got that Bob Seger strut about it, which I, I wish more manufacturers would pay attention to that. It's actually kind of surprising and in a way disappointing to me how many manufacturers have removed struts from their overhead cabinets. I, I, I think to try to reduce cost by a couple dollars, but to me, that is juice that is worth the squeeze. And you saw that extra big closet over there. And you probably noticed it does also have washer dryer hookups in there. We're going to talk about the uh, washer dryer, um, you know, hookups and the uh, the way that it interacts with the holding tanks when we step outside. First of all, though, we're going to look at road mode. Although what I'm going to tell you is it's not going to take too awful long. Because other than the front bedroom and the bathroom, you can't get too much. And as you may have noticed from my videos, I like to kind of share what I call the good with the bad. I try to be real about my information, and this RV has a lot of really cool, awesome, big qualities. But that's the thing, is that every RV's greatest asset is also its greatest liability. I think the same is true of people, really, if you think about it. But this one, you know, you have that awesome private rear room. You have that big, expansive super slide, well, almost like opposing slide living. You know, private bedroom, private bathroom. That requires this RV to be, like very very big it's it's just shy of 39 foot long tip to tail she's a big rig as a result i don't personally feel like even if you have a very capable very heavy duty half ton it does not feel like a good smart safe pairing to me this to me feels like three quarter ton country now i got to looking at this thing and i had to kind of dig back in my files because you know a lot of the rv industry it, man they do a lot of things very very similar but i got to looking at the sewer outlets on this one and at first i was a little bit confused and then i remembered something that uh, harry glenn does that is not very industry common they actually have a dedicated holding tank uh, specifically for their outside camp kitchen. Most manufacturers do not, or at least quite a few do not. So if you get back here between the kitchen and the bunk slide, there is a gray tank outlet right over here that uh, you know does not connect to anything else. It's a dedicated gray tank specifically for the outside camp kitchen. But then as we move forward on the RV in front of the axles, your kitchen and your bathroom, all of that, uh, plumbing stuff is all consolidated right here and it does uh, all come out into that one exhaust point now what I dug into a little bit further before I recorded this video I inquired on how is the the washer dryer hookup um, plumbed because a lot of manufacturers won't actually run that into a gray tank they actually are that will go into your bathroom gray tank so keep in mind if you are going to be running uh, an RV washer dryer unit in this you will very quickly uh, you know, use up those holding tank capacities, and that would best be served to use on a uh, uh, like a campsite that has dedicated on-site sewer. But I think most of the time, if you're going to be doing any sort of um, uh, washer dryer use, you're probably going to have a campsite with on-site sewer anyway. At least that makes sense to me. But actual people out there, if you could share some comments, like if you're a washer dryer user owner. Do you actually always make sure you have on-site sewer hookups or, you know, have you found it's not that big a deal and you can deal with it? And while you're leaving notes for the class, I'm going to keep on keeping on like Joe Dirt over here because life's a garden and we're going to dig it. This has a awesome front pass-through compartment. It is huge in here um, and with an even bigger baggage door over on the campsite of the RV. Uh, battery disconnect is the red switch right there. Solar charge controller on the left. Now, the, remember, the solar charge controller is optional. Um, these will always be prepped for that, meaning uh, if you get one without a factory solar package, you can put a panel on the roof. You can install a solar charge controller right there, but you will need to finish running the wiring uh, from the controller to the battery area. This is all done from the factory, which obviously costs a couple bucks, but now it's also covered under the factory warranty. And what do you think about the look of that thing right there? It almost looks like that windshield should almost like pop open like a hatchback on an SUV or something like that. But I don't, I don't think that that would be, um, that would not be good for going down the road. Although, you know, there's, there's some brands like Lance that do something like that. Very different mechanism. Doesn't matter. They don't do it. So it doesn't matter. I shouldn't even talk about it. Well, sorry, wasting time. Moving on here with that big, big baggage door. They were a little bit more limited in the forward awning space. Although I do appreciate that they still did a split awning to kind of maximize the function instead of burying uh, an awning 
over the top of a super slide, which eats up a ton of that potential awning space. Uh, it does mean on a rainy day, when you have a split awning, if you're going in and out the door, you might still get spritzed in the face a little bit. It's annoying, but again, that's real. I think if it's really raining, you should probably have the awning put away anyway, but if it's light raining, that can be a thing. But I do want to draw your attention uh, up top on this thing and talk about what's happening up here uh, at the roof level. Because I think one of the most important changes they made on the 2024 model year here for the uh, the Harry Glens and Hemispheres is that they got rid of the, any of the rubberized roofing that they had before. And they went to a fiberglass wrap over roof cap. Again, very similar to what you find on a lot of motorhomes. And I've had some people ask me some weird questions. Like they, someone told them uh, they, they thought it was some kind of like fiberglass skin on top of the normal roof. It's No, it's a fiberglass roof shell basically that gets put on this thing and that is found on all of their travel trailers both the hyperlights and the full harry glenn hemispheres that we're looking at interestingly they are not doing that on their fifth wheels and that's not like why why wouldn't they do that a travel trailer is basically one flat level and side to side wrapping the fiberglass isn't a big deal but a fifth wheel let me let me get this way a fifth wheel has you know from the the living room to the upper deck and then it has a level change it has a pitch change and fiberglass on a bend like that isn't super friendly they are working on some ways to make that happen they would like to have fiberglass roof capping on their fifth wheels at the time of this release that's not the case it doesn't make it a no maintenance roof by the way but man it sure does reduce a lot of the potential upkeep and just a more impact resistant stronger shell great if like you camp in places that have low hanging tree branches like to rake their way down the side of the rv or the roof of the rv without tearing stuff up I do also really like how uh, their air conditioners are using white shrouds because it just helps it operate more effectively, more efficiently. Uh, it just breathes a little bit easier. Now you can't really see because it's buried under the slide here, but this does ride on a wide stance stability axle system, a spread axle design. And if you're not familiar, what, what that's gonna do for us is it, it takes a lot of the, the a little bit of the sway wiggle herky jerky porpoising out of the towing equation and it'll just help this tow a little bit better now don't get me wrong this again is a large and in charge kind of camper make sure you have proper hitching and a proper vehicle before you go attempting to haul something like this around here um the uh the roof uh with the fiberglass cap someone might wonder is it still walkable yes absolutely that's why they have that prep mount right there if you want to add a uh, telescopic removable ladder to the rv just hop on amazon or whoever and have one shipped to your home you know in a big full-size camp kitchen is it me or has have these things become about as rare as frog's hair i mean these have become hard to find so it begins with you have that little slide open griddle right there i like the extra cabinet space they have the uh the the galvanized rolled steel counter too but notice the level change it brings the sink down low it's roughly at the level of just below my chubby belly button um, and just to give you an awesome visual to reference that, you know, because Americans will use anything but the metric system. <laughs> By the way, uh, I, I advise a Canadian friend of mine once, he, he was joking about that, how, you know, Americans will use anything but the metric system. I said, oh, no, you're wrong. He says, what do you mean? I said, we love the metric system. We use it to measure the diameter of bullets. And he laughed. And then he quit laughing because he realized that's true. <laughs> So if you appreciate the footage today, um, leave a little note that says, hey, thanks Heritage Glen or Hemisphere or Forest River or whatever you wanna say for pulling these things up and taking time out of their day to help stage everything up for us so that we could bring this footage to you today. And if you like all the information, even when we're showing you good with bad, make sure you hit that like button on our video just to help spread the message. And hey, consider subscribing if you haven't, knowing that I'll shoot you straight to the best of my ability here. I won't claim to be perfect, but never for a lack of trying, you know? In the meantime, I'll also leave you some links in the description to check for pricing and availability on this, as well as some links to maybe my most recent video on say like the Eagle, the Cougar, version of something like this a big triple slide bunkhouse if you want to kind of cross compare to see what else might be out there i think imagine has maybe a couple things i might have in my back pocket to show you so uh might be worth checking that out down there and until next time thanks again for tuning in take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone i'm getting awful close to the camera